This show was recorded a couple of days ago, but we just learned this morning about the passing of Darlene Osteen on October 22. So I wanted to say a few words about one of the needlework world's iconic designers, historians, and educators. Through her company, The Needle's Praise, she created more than 80 samplers and wrote three books. For me, the standout is the Queen Sampler, which I'm going to finish someday, followed closely by the English Whitework Sampler. Those two designs offer significant sophistication and stitch variety and present a healthy challenge to any needle worker. But for people like Darlene, it's not the designs. Those usually live on in some form, in this case through Needlework Press. The real loss is the knowledge and education. I've never met her, but I own her most famous book, The Proper Stitch, and from it can glean a sense of what a tremendous educator she must have been. I have no doubt that the countless people who were able to attend her presentations or even have a casual conversation with Darlene walked away much richer in needlework knowledge. Writing in her introduction to The Proper Stitch in 1994, Darlene said, Learning how to properly execute different stitches adds a new realm to the stitcher's creativity. By working added stitches in a multitude of combinations, a stitcher can create her own masterpiece with additional texture and depth and give otherwise plain embroidery a rich sophistication. My love of embroidery and love of history goes back to my teen years. The visual appearance of samplers drew me to them, but it is the stitches used to create the samplers that have influenced me. Rest in peace, Darlene, and thank you for the huge contribution you made to the hobby we love. Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. I'm Jennifer Copaz Rose. And you are listening to the midweek version of Fiber Talk, the twice weekly podcast for needlework artists. And let's see. Tonight, we have our Stitch Hour. So join us tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, on the YouTube channel. Um, yeah, we just, you know, Stitch Hour. We talk about stitching. And um, uh, if you're interested in being a guest on the uh, Stitch Hours, uh, let me know, Gary, at wetalkfiber.com. It's pretty simple to do. You uh, send some pictures of your work, and I put them up on the screen, and we talk about them, and people in the audience ask questions or simply ooh and ah over your work, <laughs> and it's fun. So Yeah. You don't, you know, and people, oh, I'm not, I'm not good enough. Hey, we're all good enough. Just show your stuff. Talk about what you experienced doing it. Um, it's, and so it's minimal effort on your part, and you just get to show off some of your work. So um, let me know. Yep. Jennifer did it. It was fun. Yep. It's always fun. Yep. So, like to show our stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, obviously the bulk of it needlework, but uh, we've had uh, people show knitting and uh, other things too. And so we, we, you know, a little variety never hurt anybody. Um, so if you're yeah. interested, let us know. So that's tonight. Then uh, Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern on the YouTube channel, we do the fourth meditative uh, stitching show. And uh, join us for that. The uh, uh, crowd's, crowd was kind of kind of small this week, but uh, enthusiastic, and so join us. It's just an hour. We do it. We confine it to an hour. And if you're sitting there stitching on a Sunday anyway, uh, sign on to YouTube and join us. And we, uh, we've, we've learned some uh, stretching exercises for stitchers, which have been very helpful. Yeah. Uh, some breathing exercises, also helpful. And then we uh, we do some meditative stitching, and then we take a, a second session of stitching and uh, just chat and exchange thoughts with the audience and amongst uh, the three of us. So um, a lot of fun. It's a quick hour. It goes by fast. So join us and uh, yeah. you know, just part of it. Yeah. That because uh, uh, Deb DeCray, now a uh, Sherry Berger, the mm -hmm. Colorado cross stitcher. Uh, taught us the stretching exercises right. and um, uh, she did that two weeks and then Deb DeCrane um, taught us some breathing exercises and so now and I didn't want to bother Sherry every week so you know we appreciate what she did and she's going to be back and do a Wednesday show with us uh, oh, soon nice. which yeah looking forward to that but so Deb uh, DeCrane this week just did both uh, 
did Sherry's exercises and the, did the breathing exercises that come from her yoga teaching. But that, you know, I commented on the show, the um, hand stretching exercises that Sherry taught us for me have been the real plus out of those efforts because uh, I sit at a keyboard all day long and if I'm not doing that, I'm stitching and, uh, and or you know, doing other things with my hands, but it's always your hands getting closed around something. Right. And, and these stretching exercises that open up your hands and move your wrists around, uh, I really uh, am incorpor- I'm incorporating those in my, in my efforts because it's just been, I think, a real plus. I've really gotten something out of that. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I like doing it, especially the one where you stretch your hands out and really open up all your fingers wide and stuff. Yeah. That one, and then the one where you touch your fing- your thumb to each individual finger, mm-hmm. that's a really good one that I I hadn't ever really done before, and yeah, I really like that one too. Yeah, yeah, and you then, you don't you don't realize how your hands just kind of get in the same form mm-hmm. all the time until you do something like that. Yeah, right. And you ride your bike too, which right, means your hands yeah. are really gripping. <laughs> right. For hours, you know, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you yeah. really need it. <laughs> well, and, and that's, see, that's just it is because, um, yeah, I mean, I'll sit on my bike, ride my bike for two hours, three hours. And so your hands really don't, I mean, you move them around. Obviously, you move your hands around, but they're still always wrapped around something. And, right. Uh, the first time that Sherry did that, and you, you know, open your hands and, and splay your fingers out. Yeah, it's like, whoa, hello. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yep. you know, and, and it's varying degrees of close too, because like around the needle versus a, a bike handlebar versus a keyboard um, or, you know, if, like if you're doing woodwork, you know, it's different kinds of things, but it's still some variation of, of partially closed. Yeah. And, um, well, even writing have like I haven't written with like a pen or pencil in a long time because I don't I don't have a job where I need to sit down and write stuff down. Yeah. And or you, and I type. So then when I do sit down and I try to write, my hand gets cramped fast. <laughs> <Yep>. my, my handwriting <laughs> is terrible now. I used to have nice handwriting, and now my handwriting is atrocious. <laughs> like, yeah. it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, but in, you're, you're dead right, and then your hand gets tired faster, and your, your writing gets yeah. sloppy. And yeah, yeah, because, and I think that that's in general, uh, everybody has that where um, mm-hmm. you just don't write much. Like, I, you know, I used to have. I'm I'm left-handed, so on on the side of my middle finger, I used to have a pretty good callus because I used to write all the time, making notes yeah. and things. I don't do that hardly at all anymore. That callus is gone, and and I have the same experience when I write. Is uh, yeah, my hand gets fatigued, and uh, a drawback. When I think it was our tenth anniversary, I'm a I'm a pen snob. I hate I cheap pens, that. you know. I'm a pen snob. And mm-hmm. I think it was our tenth anniversary. Marga bought me a Mont Blanc fountain pen. Oh, nice. Love that thing. Yeah, and I mm-hmm. still have it today. I mean, it's it's old now. In relative terms, it's old. And I love that pen. I love writing with it. But, you know, I got to the point where I was doing so little writing with it because I just didn't have a need to that I finally uh, uh, cleaned out the ink because the ink would evaporate out. And I finally, I just cleaned mm. it all out. And it sits there on my desk dry because... I mean, it was getting to the point where I was using it so infrequently that uh, the ink would dry in the nib or it would just evaporate out. And, um, uh, you know, that's not good for it. So right. so now I haven't written with that in some time. Um, and I feel bad about it because I love that pen, but I just don't have cause to write on paper. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I and, used to, when I was studying in university, when you had to memorize definitions. Mm-hmm. Or if, you know, the textbook, they would have certain things highlighted. The way I would study is I would go and get my notebook and I would write down that definition and I would write it out and I would do it and I would do like the first, I do one in blue and then I do one in black ink and then I do one in red ink and you alternate like that. And Uh then when you study, you also, you don't always start and stop on the same page. Right. You flip a couple pages so that the middle section you know, because when you study, a lot of times you remember the beginning and the end and you lose the middle. Mm-hmm. So you're always switching it up. And like the one year that I did that, like really well and really religiously, I got straight A's and I took 21 hours. <laughs> 
and like I aced everything. Uh-huh. But um, but I did so much writing by hand that I too had that little callus that you get on one of your fingers yeah, and yeah. you know, and yep. I went through pens like crazy. I love yeah. school supplies. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, no, I remember. Yeah. How much, how fast you could write for how a long time. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. it looked good too. Yep. Now I write fast. I can't even read it five minutes later. <laughs> yep. So like... those have been uh, so in the meditate show that has been fun. In addition to just doing meditative stitching, um, mm-hmm. uh, that I've just enjoyed that. Just that, and I did it uh, this past Sunday after the show. I was work. I'm working on the Avlia basket weave thing. And uh, I just kept stitching on it right on through because I watched the set, the football games and right into the evening, the evening football game. I just kept going. And uh, that meditative stitching is nice. I mean, you don't have to think. You don't have to count. You just go. And, yeah. Yeah. It is nice. And then yep. you can get a nice, pretty useful item for your house. Yep. If that's what you're doing it for, mm-hmm. you're making something. Yeah. yeah. I'm really anxious to see how your stool comes out. I know. Like, I'm... I'm... I'm working on it right now as we chat <laughs> All right. because I don't have to look at a pattern and I can keep my hands busy. <laughs> right. Yep. So but, join uh, us on, join us on Sundays every Sunday now, uh, till through the weekend before Thanksgiving. Um, it's a seven week thing. We've done three of them. So four yeah. more left. So join us. It's, uh, for the hour. It's fun. Um, yeah, and then, nice. uh, Monday hearts, FT Monday hearts is the hashtag. So on Mondays, remember to post pictures of your, uh, heart or heart related stitching we're not doing there's no show yes. with it it's just to post them so right. do you have right. that uh, wedding thing done yet yeah no because okay because last time my my heart really wanted to work on this other project so okay <laughs> so i did the other project but i did post in the fiber talk monday hearts hashtag and i said that my heart wanted to work on my sunflower project <laughs> i saw so. that yeah yeah. It was a lame out, but okay. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. And of course, I should talk. I mean, I, I stitched all night, Monday night, uh, last week, and then forgot to post the picture. So, um, oh my gosh. It's we'll funny. have, uh, we'll have one for sure. Uh, uh, yeah. Have one. Uh, <laughs> well, I did post. That was two weeks ago. So I did post Monday night. So, um, update right. on the, uh, Gail, Gay and Rogers thing. Yep. So do that. Yep. And of course, we're still doing the Royal Garden and from dawn to dusk. Um, some of us, namely Jennifer doing more than I am, but, um, yeah, I need to get back to that one. The dawn yeah. to dusk is sitting here looking at me going, hi, remember yeah. me? Yeah. But you I've were flying a for a while. Of, yeah. And then, well, then we started this meditating thing. So I started working <laughs> on that and then I really wanted those Mill Hill pumpkins, the kits yeah. with the beads. Yeah, what's so, the deal with those? You bought a whole bunch of those. You yeah, I bought a, like five because they're yeah. so cute. I saw them earlier this year in a magazine. I was like, oh my gosh, those are so cute. And, you know, I've seen other Mill Hill kits and stuff and they're cute. But these ones I had to have. It's just something about them. <laughs> okay. So do you and have I them tried, all done? No. So oh. I have one finished. I have oh, the well. first one finished. It's the one called Autumn Pumpkin. And I've got... It, the, you know, they give you the perforated paper and all that. Yeah, yeah. So I finished the first one, but there's still tons of floss left over and tons of beads left over. So I am now stitching it on 32 count linen mm. over two because I want to see the difference between it done on the perforated paper versus on linen or yeah. soft fabric or whatever. Yeah. Hmm. And what I want to do, so that my plan is is I want to take the linen one and I actually want to make a round little pumpkin. Okay. So, you know, I'll have to, I'll have to make, you know, when you sew something that's kind of round or circular, it's really kind of like orange wedges Yeah. that are sewed together. Yeah. So I'll have to make some little orange wedgy things and I'll probably have to do some extra stitching around the outside. So, so that when I sew it, it'll fill in any of the white linen part. Mm-hmm. And I'll sew it by hand. And then the stem, because the stem sticks up. So I'm going to make it flush. I'm not going to do the, the curly part of the stem. I'll do some of the green. And then I might try to do some sort of a beaded thing for the stem. Like I have done knitting with beads before, where if you just knit and stock a net, and on the pearl side, you put the beads on, it curls in on itself. Uh-huh. And so it makes like a circular thing. You don't have to make it that way. It just does it. 
so I might mm-hmm. try that. Hmm. I'm not sure, but I want to. I want to try one and see. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it comes out. I know. Yeah. So yeah, I know when you bought all I'm... those and you posted that you bought them. I'm like, Whoa, Jennifer! <laughs> <laughs> well, Locked in know. on that. <laughs> I, I can't buy just one. You have to get them all. Because <laughs> they're not very big, are they? Just four or five inches? No. Not even that big. They're like two and some change by three. Oh, like okay. they're small. Yeah. Yeah, they're real small ornament sized. <laughs> so they're little. Well, it'll be and interesting then, course, to see the... what you do with them. Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm real curious how this one's going to turn out. So I'm really working on finishing that. So that'll probably be... That'll be, my heart will be working on that on Monday, too. So, <laughs> okay. or worked on that on Monday, okay. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I, I want to get it done. All right. Sometimes I get something in my head that I just really want it, and everything else ceases to exist, and it's like, I focus on that. Okay. Like All with right. the Paula Vaughn, I got that August Paula Vaughn finished. Yep, you did. Because we talked about Paula Vaughn, and then it was just like, it was in my head and I was so close to being done that I sat down and I did nothing but Paula Vaughn until I got it done. <laughs> yeah, those are beautiful. Yeah. So, yes, yep. I have four more to go. Well, all right, let's go. Get them done by. I know. Yeah. But the uh, the uh, wedding thing now, of course, your anniversary is coming up, so no yes. pressure. <laughs> well, you know, I've got a few more Mondays left. Okay. All and right. there's not much left to do. Yeah. Those are famous last so. words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, yeah, the, yeah. How many people have sung that song? Yeah. Oh yes, mm-hmm. me many times. Yep. So um, yeah, so the Monday Hearts, and then now November four, uh, it's tentative, but I'm pretty sure it'll happen. Uh, we'll be back with April from the Embroiderers Guild Galleries in Sydney, Australia, for the next uh, Gallery seventy six tour, and that is supposed to be um, Indian textiles. So oh, nice. uh, I'm I'm looking forward to that, and uh, and we're try- the, the plan is that we'll have the artist with us as we have the last couple of times, but to learn about the colors and the prints and so on and so forth uh, in Indian textiles. So join us for that. Uh, those are those are a real treat. I really appreciate April doing those, um, and and being patient and making yeah. the technology work out between uh, yeah. <laughs> all the places, <laughs> Australia to. Illinois to you on the East Coast and Beth over yep. in, uh, on the other side of Illinois. So, yeah, we really appreciate that. But that, that's coming up. That should be November 4. And all of our Wednesday shows are 8 o'clock Eastern time on the YouTube channel. So um, right. you can, it's pretty easy to remember. So that and then um, uh, doing a lot of recording here in the next uh, week or so. So I have I'm pretty excited about this, but a little hesitant here. Nicoletta Carbone from Giuliana Ricama. And that's a magazine, Italian magazine, that I think, yeah, I, I can equate it to inspirations from Australia. I mean, it's, it's, mm-hmm. as, it's as beautiful and, uh, you know, very nice projects and top, top designers and so on and so forth. So um, uh, going to talk to her about the magazine and then learn about... Um, uh, the needlework world in Italy and the surrounding area. And, uh, but, but now the reason I'm hesitant is because we haven't recorded it yet. We, we have to do it through an interpreter. I've never done that. Oh, so, okay. yeah. Uh, so that the, like every time I interview somebody, I send them a sheet with uh, questions and topics just to kind of guide the conversation. Well, this time I had to really do a formal, uh, list of questions i couldn't just put down you know a few words here and there just for topics i had to actually structure it and plan it all out uh because she Mm -hmm. the the, the translator needs to know and you know they're trying to work it out on their end um but uh but i'm I'm most curious yeah and the cool the the, the reason well i want to do it because i've been wanting to do uh learn more about the italian uh, world of needlework but Mm -hmm. also uh juliana ricama a magazine now has an English version, uh, nice. English language version. So you can, and I've I've subscribed to it, of course. Why not? Okay, yes. <laughs> but um, uh, so and that's a new thing for them. So I wanted to uh, learn more about the magazine so that people who might be interested in the English version would have a sense of what it, what it is and how it works. So right. um, so that's coming up, 
And then another one, uh, Andrea Cabral, who uh, her her design uh, business is Black Cat Creative Studio, and she's in Maya, Por- Portugal. So it's on the coast, the northern coast of Portugal, and uh, she does she does some fascinating embroidery, uh, very different. So going to wow. have her coming up, and um, uh, so that'll be fun. And then uh, we'll be back with the second uh, show with Stephanie Bonneau uh, from England, where we talk about uh, her experiences and, and what it's like in the world of, of haute, haute couture, however mm-hmm. you say that, um, high, yeah, high haute fashion, couture. high fashion, uh-huh. and all those big fancy shows with all the big design houses. So we'll get to learn, uh, that's part two, because we just had Stephanie a couple weeks ago, um, so part two of that to learn about that. So that's coming up. And then Sunday's uh, guest will be Jan Hicks. Jan Hicks Creates. And that's cross-stitch and full coverage cross-stitch. And yeah, yeah, very, very interesting. Wow. Yep, she's pretty neat. So um, lots of good stuff coming up here. Good guests yeah. coming up. Yep. Jan, Jan Hicks, you said, right? Yep, Jan Yeah, Hicks. I follow her on Instagram. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I've seen her, and I've seen a few of her YouTubes, too. Yeah, she does a nice job with those, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, so that's coming up. Dana Bathel from Peacock and Fig. Mm-hmm, uh, I remember to her, her interview. Yeah. That was excellent. Um, military veteran, ca- Canadian military veteran, and uh, she stitches, a lot of her stitching lying down because of a shoulder neck uh, injury. But um, right. it's a fascinating story. Look that up, Dana Bathel, B-A-T-H-O, Peacock and Fig. It's a good story, quite a story about her. Um, and a designer has her own business, so on and so forth. She posted on um, on Monday. She posted on Instagram a piece. She was she was mad. <laughs> she was <laughs> mad, Uh-oh. but she's right. But uh, she had been contacted, and this this really hit home for me too. She had been contacted by uh, a magazine to contribute one of her designs. Mm-hmm. And the contribution was, or the compensation was, fame and glory, you know, for the right. exposure. Right. And uh, she did a rant that basically, uh, oh, she said it, you know, it's insulting to me as an artist that that's the extent of the value. And right. uh, that you should pay artists. Uh, for helping you to deliver editorial content to people that are paying for your magazine. And uh, and she's dead right. And she went on a little rant about it and uh, how, you know, exposure is not compensation. It's insulting. And uh, she even said if it was, if you weren't writing to women as designers, if it was men, you wouldn't even think about it. And there's probably some truth to that too, sadly. Hmm. Um but she, you know, she just made a really good point, and I remember DMC uh, not too, not too long ago was asking for people to contribute designs that they would put on their website, asking for designers, and there was quite a bit of heat sent back their way about you should pay, uh, oh. you, you know, you should pay your pay designers, and a lot of people refused to contribute because they wanted, you know, it was for the fame and glory thing, and. Oh. Um, uh, and they're right. You know, these artists create art and they should be compensated for it. If you want it bad enough, they should be compensated. And right. uh, Dana is spot on. And it, what really hit home for me is, see, that's what happened in the in the photography world. Mm-hmm. And uh, these days to be a professional photography photographer, particularly an art photographer, uh, you know, where you're not photographing a wedding or something. Right. Um, you know, you're doing a, a beautiful sunrise or horses running or, you know, any of those kinds of things. Uh, that kind of, of photography where if I'm a magazine and I'm doing a, well, I'll just use horses. I'm doing an article on horses, say wild horses, and I need a, a beautiful photo for the opening spread of wild horses running. Uh, you know, magazines are not willing to pay as much or at all because it's too easy to find people who will do it for fame and glory. You know, I, I happened to, I happened to be on a trip, took this really nice picture. And if you'll put my name in the magazine, you can have the photo. Right. And, uh, and so it, it did a lot of damage to the, uh, professional photographer world 
a lot of damage in terms yeah. of people being able to make a career of it. And because uh, um, everybody has a phone, everybody's a photographer these days. And, and, you know, the end result is it lowers the bar for what is considered good photography or excellent photography because you pretty soon you start seeing substandard imagery and that becomes accepted as good. And hmm. um, so uh, Dana is right. You know, these magazines, you need to pay for the artwork. And uh, you ask somebody to create a design and put all the instructions together, stitch up a model, do the photography, and then, well, yeah, but I'm giving you exposure. Right. Well, no, you're not. No, it, that doesn't pay, you know. It doesn't, yeah. uh, I've so, got I mean, expenses. You can get your own free exposure on Instagram and Facebook if you right. want. Right. And, so. and there's real expenses behind uh, creating art. Mm -hmm. and, and and people always you know they think well uh, discount your time sorry no time you know time is valuable and time is yeah. it, it requires money compensation and um uh so i thought she it was a good post she she did a nice job i mean she was blunt and she didn't mince any words uh, mm -hmm. but uh, just a good post about uh if if you know, particularly magazines, but anybody who is is uh, making money off your artwork, you need to be compensated. You need to be compensated. Right. And um, uh, so, uh, you're just yep. a good point. Just a good point. And, yeah. uh, and you know, and it's, I briefly tried to do to like sell things oh, that I made. I briefly uh -huh. tried it, and my goodness, the amount, the expense of the business license and having to keep up with the paperwork all the time and then just your supplies your margin of of profit is so minuscule unless you're buying in gigantic bulk which if right. you're a hobbyist you're not going to do that right you know? yeah yeah you make no profit let alone your time i mean yep. you know and that was a very brief little venture that i tried it lasted <laughs> 10 seconds and then i was over it <laughs> I'm like, out nope. of this, yeah. Nope. Yeah. Anybody that says, why don't you try selling it? It's like, well, you start doing it and you make some stuff and then you tell me how much you're willing and I'll tell you how much people will pay for it too. And it's nothing. Yep. You're going to pay more for your ball of yarn than you are. <laughs> yep. Then they're going to want to pay you, you know. Yep. It's, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you got to want to do it. You got to want to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and that's why, like when we do so, these do these shows with guests, you know, I, you're encouraged. Now, it, you're encouraged to uh, you know support them, you know, and I, we mm -hmm. say that a lot. Support them, support the stores, buy their charts, uh, buy the yeah. kits from stores, um, because that's. I mean, we want these people to stay in business, and um, you know, we we you know, I take the time, or you, you know, you and I and Beth, we take the time to put these shows together. And, uh, uh, but the, the, you know, the economic part of it is support these people, uh, mm -hmm. help, you know, we, we telling you a little bit about a bit about them in a show, get to learn more about them, learn what's behind those designs. Hopefully they'll have more meaning to you, but go, you know, buy their designs. If you like them, uh, support right. them, uh, share them with other, you know, don't share the designs, make people buy their own, but, but like tell people about them, you know? Right. Share in the way of, look what I bought. You should go get it too. Yep. Uh, so yeah, yeah, stitch them, and that's what I them. love about yep. the interviews with the designers and stuff is you learn about their process and what inspires them, and it makes you you're just like wow that is amazing, and I am going to go support you and buy something of yours now because I know more about you. Yeah, it 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 really it's part of it, you know. Yep. Yeah, support these people yes. and support our sponsors, please, please. Tell them uh, Fiber Talk sent you because um, yep. that's how it works. Like, sometimes, you know, I joined the EGA and it's like, how did you hear about us? I put down in other, I put Fiber Talk. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> so, you know. Yep. It's how it works. It's like everything else. you are else. the first one that I heard talking about it a lot. Really? Previous. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know. Yep. Yeah. And join EGA. Yeah, you know, I encourage you to enjoy EGA. I, I've been. I'm glad mm -hmm. I joined. I'm not a joiner, but I'm glad I joined <laughs> joined the um, EGA. Yeah. So so anyway, a good a good one from Dana Batho, Peacock and Fig, and go to Peacock and Fig, and check her uh, uh, check her out. She has some uh, creative stuff, 
and mm-hmm. listen to that podcast and learn more about her. Yeah, that she has was a, really a, good. A, a interesting story. And she's fun to follow. Her, she, uh, Dana and her dog, I forget her dog's name, but uh, oh. um, yeah, she's uh, she's fun one to follow. So uh, uh, check that out. But Dana, Dana, Dana firing off a good rant there. That was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. So, uh, yep. The question of the day, I think. Can you work in a mess? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right. That'll really. end, and that'll end this day's subject. <laughs> uh, well, it's like, how big is the mess? There is a point when my organized clutter becomes too much, and then I have to really clean it up and put it away so then I can function again. Yes. But I'll, But, like, I'm one of those people that I cannot have my threads of any kind i don't care what what it is there it can't be just laying around all higgledy piggledy looping together and smushed on a board that whole uh, no i cannot do that they have to be tidied away before i get out the new one i have to tidy away the old one just so yeah yeah now see like that (laughs) and and my answer to that is if you look at my work table and area which some of it you see in the background on uh, live shows. Mm-hmm. It looks like a mess. Most of the storage is a mess because I've yet to figure out a neat way to store a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's all stored away. But my table, <laughs> it goes through cycles. I went through, <laughs> it was like a month ago. and I, yeah, it, This question came up and I looked at my table. Uh, doggone it, a month ago, I had, other than my basket of active threads, I had a cleaned off table. Right. And there's something about that left side of the table, which is up against the shelves that I store stuff in. I have no idea why that will not stay cleaned off. But right now (laughs) it's a pile of stuff. And uh, I was, when I was stitching last night, some of the stuff slid down. It's like, come on. So so now I have to take time and I have to get that cleaned up again and organized. I do not um, know why, but but I have kept the other two thirds so of the funny. table open. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, because yeah. that's where you put stuff that you like. Maybe you just got it, maybe, and you want to look at it again or you want to yeah. talk about it, so you don't want to forget about it, so you put it in the spot. Right. And then it just becomes this overwhelming heap because yeah. I have one of those too. <laughs> I don't know what that is because, you know, you're oh. and you're right and you're right. And part of it is I get stuff out for live shows uh-huh. and then I need to and I've been really trying to put everything back when I'm done. Right. Um, but oh, yeah. Now it's just a mess again. It's like, geez, come on. Because, yeah. yeah, you got to have space. You got to have space, yes. empty space when you're working on something. Um, like you said, it, put the threads out so you can get to them so you're not spending time shuffling through piles of stuff Mm -hmm. and um yeah it's your tools you know tools scissors and laying tools and other things uh shouldn't have to move three things to get to the laying tool it should just be right there right right (laughs) yeah i know and and so like my dining room normally (laughs) i really try to keep everything sequestered away and but now like my whole house is it's 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 a bomb went off a stitching bomb went off in my house <laughs> and my husband's just like he doesn't even notice anymore he just rolls his eyes and squeezes by because he can't even walk through the little walkway area because <laughs> my stand is here uh-huh. and it's all squished and i've got i turned the cat post since the cats don't use it i've turned it into part of my stitching stand area too Uh oh uh oh <laughs> now it's even affecting the cats okay this is yeah, not good i mean well, they only use the little doghouse part in the bottom. They don't use the top. So I'm oh. like, well, I'll use the top then because I need go. it. <laughs> I don't have enough room. <laughs> but like in my sewing room, my sewing table, I have like a, a card table size table. Mm-hmm. But it's sturdier than that. But I have that in my sewing room. That's my cutting table. But it, it always ends up being the resting place for new charts that come in or you know, something it's like, okay, you need to put it away, but I'll just put it here for now and I'll put it away in a couple of days. Well, then it just, you keep doing that and you have this huge mountain and then it takes a whole day to go through it all, put it back where it belongs. Whereas if you just did it at the beginning, 
wouldn't be a problem, but I just can't seem to do that. So you have a, <laughs> I mean, let's back up the truck a little bit. You have a room dedicated to sewing. <laughs> I do. But your stitching won't fit in it. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. I'm feeling pretty good about myself <laughs> right now. I'm feeling, yeah, pretty good now because I have oh. one area and I'm all contained in that area. I, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Because you're a sad case. Right? I'm just going to say to you, you're a sad case <laughs> if you have a whole room and you can't even get in it. Okay. Uh-huh. And uh -huh. like right now, Royal Garden is sitting on my sewing chair. And I've, <laughs> I've got the rest of the threads in from Sassy okay. Jack okay, so, in the middle of my cutting table. <laughs> okay. So, so you don't even have, you have to put stuff on the chair because you can't even put an active project on a surface. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. true. Okay. Yeah, right. we yep. should do a we should do a walkthrough one day. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm feeling really good now. Mm -hmm. and Thank I'm you. Not even counting the basement, which is where I was doing like my finishing with the glue and all that stuff. Uh -huh. That whole table, which I need to finish. <laughs> Remember those little those little Christmas things I was doing the three folds the stand. Right. Yeah. The stand ups, and I I have like two that I have to mount and then I just have to put the decorative ribbon and stuff on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still have to do that. It's still <laughs> down there and I haven't gone down there to do that. Mm -hmm. Plus you should see the little basket on my cutting table that is holding a gazillion cross stitch pieces that need finished, but I can't get at the cutting table to like do the finishing cause everything's on it. Keep digging, Jennifer. I'm feeling better by the it's, minute. Yep. It's a, Keep digging. It's, it's a beautiful. Real problem. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so but your actual stitching area, which is clearly in the way of uh, just simple egress through the house, yes. um, uh, which is you know there's there's a safety issue there that we'll explore at another time. But <laughs> talk good. about your stitching area. So you have your stand. You have a table there. The table. Okay, so the dining room table is behind me, so I turned the chair around. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, how do I use my stand otherwise, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the dining table is behind me, and like all of my dawn to dusk stuff is at the end of it because we only use one end to eat on. Uh huh. And even then, we have to move. I have like magazines, cross stitch magazines, and a couple things I have to deal with, you know, piled. Uh -huh. And then also that's where I sat to sort my beads for yeah. my pumpkin. So I've got packets of beads and little things that I'm having the beads held on all over over there too. Wow. So it, 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 it's, yeah, I need to clean. <laughs> like I need to, I need to tidy and put some, but I keep every day I'm switching to a different project. It's mm -hmm. like today I'm working on this project and then I'm working on that project. So I don't want to put it all away just to have to get it all right back out right oh i agree with right? that i agree with that yeah yeah you, right yeah you waste and a lot of time just collecting my, stuff yeah yeah and since my sewing room is occupied by everything <laughs> other stuff <laughs> i mean i've got this quilt that i've been working on for a bazillion years that i have the pieces are laid out in piles to be sewn together still on my sewing table uh -huh. with some books and a light box and my iron Okay. Yeah. 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 You, uh, yeah. I think you need to have a come to Jesus moment here where we, uh, um... yeah. <laughs> I've already tidied it once earlier this year and I had to buy some big old bins, like big ones mm -hmm. to put my, my quilt, all of my quilt projects in mm -hmm. and oh dear, that was, I was like, wow, look at all these unfinished quilt projects you have started and in mm -hmm. various stages of completion and i hardly ever sew anymore yep it's bad yeah that's pretty a, bad okay i'm a all bad right. bad all girl right. <laughs> all right i'm gonna i'm gonna be delaying my cleaning effort a couple of weeks now i'm feeling pretty good <laughs> yeah yeah i got um, working space on my table uh i don't have stuff yeah i'm i'm feeling good thank you jennifer uh -huh. i knew it was a, a good reason to talk to you today <laughs> yep you yeah, uplifted I mean, me mm-hmm I posted a picture on Instagram and Facebook a few weeks ago of the chaos that, like, my table, you can see all. And it's funny, in that picture, in the distance, you can see into the sewing room, and you can see the royal garden that's sitting on the chair in wow. my sewing room behind the other three projects that I have there. Then there's 
my sewing chair is right in front there, my, my comfy chair. Mm -hmm. And that's where I sit and use my, you know, my not use my big stand. I can use my smaller stand or my sandy stand mm -hmm. or stitch in hand. And that's where I'm doing the pandemic and the pumpkins. And, okay. and then that table. So then the, the living room table has projects piled on it, like three or four. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's yeah. read, let's, re <laughs> let's redefine the question. <laughs> The question what was, was the can question? you work in a mess? All right, let's read it. <laughs> yeah, clearly you can, yes. Um, but let's redefine that. that. Let's, but... let's just look at your immediate stitching area, okay? Uh-huh. Now, d does that, that, just the immediate area where you have your threads and your stand, does right. that have to be organized and cleared out so that you... Yes, it's tidy. Okay. It has to be tidy and everything like the threads have to remain tidy and they can't be tangled. And like I said, before I get out a new one, I have to put the old one away. Okay. Because I can't have stuff just jumbled all over the place. So that's like a demilitarized zone then. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Apparently right. I, I've gotten very good at working in a mess. I think that I've just, you just don't see it anymore, you know? Yeah. It, it just blends into the background. That does happen, I will say. Yeah. Yeah. Usually the signal for me is, all right, when I have to, when I'm down to like a, a foot by foot square of open space that I can actually work in, okay, that you know, that's too far. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't have that right now. But, okay. um, yeah, the last time I had to clean up, <laughs> I realized that I was moving stuff off of the table. So it, it, I was setting up for a live show. So mm -hmm. I had to move stuff off the table to make room for the computer and the uh, iPad so we could do the live show. And, all right, this is out of control, but I don't have to do that now. I can just set them up. Um, so, yeah. But, but yeah, I, I, that, I have to... That you have to have an area. I think you have to have a, a, a yeah demilitarized zone, a, an empty area, because uh, if otherwise, if you're dragging like you're dragging your sleeve over threads that are on top of threads, then they oh, get yeah, no. caught to the sleeve and on the floor they go and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that I can't do that. And I've I know a lot of people. I've seen them on their shows or whatever. They have their. They don't. I, I want I either put my flosses in a bag, a little floss away bag. Especially I do that with my silks. Mm -hmm. But the um, the cotton, I I put all mine on those little bobbins. Yeah. I always have. I always always have. Yeah, I do too. And yep. um, and now DM like Darius used to make the bobbins, and they were really good and they held stuff. But now DMC makes the bobbins, the little plastic ones, and their little openings where you're supposed to tuck the ends, they're all open. They don't hold anything. Oh. So I don't use those anymore. I buy the cardboard ones. Mm hmm Because the plastic ones that they make now don't work. Hmm. So I buy the cardboard ones. And um but yeah, even the um the over dyed flosses, I hmm. put on the things and some of them are pre cut. And all you do is you kind of hold the tail down and you wind it over and make it wind and hold it down. And then you start the next floss, you overlap it a little and you just wind it on. And then I carefully tear around the name of the color and of the floss. So it'll fit on the card and I wind it on and I do that because I can't have them all laying all over the place, getting a big mess. Yep. That, that doesn't yeah. work for me. And it ruins the flosses. Mm -hmm. This stuff, I mean, yeah, it's not silk, but it can get worn out by being touched and rubbed too much. Yes. Yep. So. Yeah. I, I, all my uh, all my DMC um, and the Cosmo thread that I'm using now, um, lovely thread, by the way, I put mm -hmm. that on bobbins. I have a, it's a plastic bobbin. It's been around forever. It's a little bigger, and so I use those, and they have oh, little okay. slot, little slots to put the thread in, so that holds it there. Um, so I wind those on bobbins, but um, uh, silks, silks as a rule go on uh, thread drops and go on a ring for each, like if it's a sampler, you know. Okay. Those right. all go. Those all go. They get cut to a length and then hung on thread drops, and that works. Then so all the colors for that sampler are on one ring, uh, but then. 
specialty threads, those go in floss away bags for me. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 So that, I mean, that just works for me. I, I it's kind of a mixed thing because mm-hmm. you, you, you putting them on, on bobbins, everything on bobbins, there's, you know, there's a uniformity there. That's nice. Yeah. Right. And then also if I'm working, so what I do when I work on a project is I have smaller, you know, I've got those big boxes that you put the flosses in, but then I have a couple smaller ones that hold fewer. Mm-hmm. So that I will take all the DMCs and even the, now that I use the specialty threads, the over dies, I get those too. And some of the things I do, like those cottages, the whole project isn't in specialty flosses. You maybe use three or four and then the rest is DMC. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I like to be able to put them both together in the little box and not have one in bags and one loose. Like it all needs to be stored together nice and neat. Mm-hmm. So my storage is nice and neat, but it's just piles of it everywhere. <laughs> but it is nice and neat and organized. Yes. It's just, pi- it's just yes. piled. Yes. But I know where everything is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sell it. My Sell husband, it, Jennifer. Sell it. My husband just rolls his eyes and he's like, we need a bigger house. When we get the bigger house, all of your stuff is going to stay in one part of the house and not come out. And I look at him, I'm like, seriously? You think that's going to happen? Uh, send, like, yeah, yeah send, send me his cell phone number. I need to have a conversation <laughs> with him because uh, I need to help him. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, because his little fantasy world is going to get it destroyed. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, already I have, you know, I, I have quilts hanging on the walls. And mm-hmm. So the yep. blankies everywhere that I've made. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. I think we're going to end right now with the uh, vision we have <laughs> of your sewing room, stitching area, oh dining room God. table. I think we're going. Yeah, that's where we're going to have that mental image as we go away here. It's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's let's just keep that in our minds, and then uh, we'll look for the day when you post a photo where everything is pin neat. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't mm. know. I just don't have enough room to store everything either. I have mm. two big cabinets downstairs that I put a lot of stuff in. Mm-hmm that we bought recently and there's just maybe i i I do a lot of crafts yeah well yeah Uh uh-huh all right well yeah i think with that (laughs) mental image we'll end the show right here that's good all right okay yeah thanks jennifer that was fun i feel so much better today Mm -hmm. Uh yeah me too (laughs) yep all right thanks everybody for listening jan hicks jan hicks recreates Uh is sunday and join us for our live shows (laughs) 